Hey there golfers and welcome to the Second Swing Tour Van here at the Minneapolis store. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell today, Master Club Fitter here uh, with another live broadcast as you know uh, live every Thursday at 10 a.m. now for the foreseeable future. Um, we're going to try to put these together. Uh, kind of a fun one today. We're actually going to play some virtual golf at St. Andrews Golf Links. Uh, and so uh, we have some, some a fun, fun challenge today. I think that'll be interesting. Uh, obviously St. Andrews virtually is a little different than vir St. Andrews in person. But uh, we'll play some golf and then we'll also answer your questions and concerns and any thoughts you might have in terms of golf equipment, uh, golf club fitting, etc. Um, I know Thomas is the best in the biz on that as well. So um, as people start kind of coming in here, um, I just wanted to kind of, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some of the content we filmed and that's kind of what's coming up here. So Thomas, we've done a lot of filming uh, inside here at the Tour Van Bay over the last couple of weeks. So uh, can you maybe, you know, tell some people uh, what's, coming up, what's coming up for us here? Yeah, this is a busy time of the year where we have access to tour van a little bit more, fitting slow down a little bit when it's, when it's winter season. Mm -hmm. But we've been doing a lot of content. We've got a lot of videos that we're trying to put together. Um, first thing, tomorrow, what's gonna come up tomorrow on our channel is going to be the Bushnell Launch Pro or the Foresight GC3. We did a test of that versus TrackMan with the RCT Golf Ball. So I know a lot of people have very, been very interested in the uh, and the Bushnell Launch Pro, it's mm -hmm. you know, pretty reasonably priced and it's got subscription models out there with it as well, or you can get the Foresight GC3 with all, all in once essentially. So we did some testing with that. We tested wedge, seven iron, mm -hmm. and driver. I was amazed at how accurate right. the numbers were both. Basically identical with regards to ball speed, spin rate, total distance, launch angle. We're talking within half a degree. I mean, or, they were. Yeah. It was. It was basically the same numbers. I think there was like one time where the spin was like maybe a hundred RPM difference, but otherwise, you know, Bushnell Launch Pro looks to be a really nice product here moving forward. So, um, I think we're very excited to see that kind of roll out here. So. Yeah, and the other thing we've also been testing with is being the RCT Bowl as well. So mm -hmm. we've been testing with that for the last week. Notice that the numbers have been very, very good with that. And there's yeah. no italicized spin. You don't have to worry about having that silver dot face enough or anything like that. You can just put it on the ground. And it's been very, very accurate as uh, we've done initial testing. And we'll put a review up soon on uh, that as well. So, yeah, we've been filming that. Uh, Monday, I-59 versus iBlade. I believe that's yep. going up on our, on our channel. Um, so that's an interesting one because the I-59 has replaced the iBlade. Uh, we've noticed that the I-59 has spun a little bit more these last... Uh, mm -hmm. Last couple of testing sessions, a little higher spinning iron for those golfers that need spin. Sure. Well, we got already a couple of questions coming in here on the comments. Um, somebody asking about the RCT ball going to be available for fittings. Um, we are still working on that uh, with our team, trying to figure out the logistics of getting those involved here. Uh, we will keep you posted. Uh, obviously, we'd like to have that um, involved in our fittings because of the technology that that offers. Um, right. Another one here that I'd, I would like to bring up as we kind of get going here. One question before we really get into the golf. Uh, from Irvin here asking, how do I know if my iron shafts are too light and too soft? I got fitted for a 65 grain regular graphite shaft, but I've been hooking the ball a lot with my swing speed getting faster. So Thomas, um, you have any thoughts for Irvin here? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's gonna be always player dependent. Uh, 65 gram regular shaft um, and he's uh, hooking the ball a lot. Um, sometimes it, it might be just a quick transition. So if you have a faster transition, you're, you might have a general tendency to need to go a little bit towards a heavier mm -hmm. shaft. Even though that club speed is only 65 miles an hour, you might fit into a lighter golf shaft, it's going to be player dependent. Sure. Generally speaking, a lighter shaft makes it easier to hook. A heavier shaft may be a little harder to turn over. Now I'm different because my transition is very quick and if right. I ever play a light shaft, I can never get that club face to turn over because the torque I'm loading that shaft so early and I just club pace never catches up. Right. So it's always going to be player dependent. Um, that's why it's important to check out different shafts there as well. But I would try something a little heavier. Okay. Well, yeah, that's some, that's some good stuff here. Now, I think, are you ready to play some, some golf here? We are. Yeah. This We're going to try this out. Fun. Yeah. I've played about three holes um, virtually on, on TrackMan. So this is going to be fun. So this will be a good test. We mm -hmm. see how good our, our game is and yeah. we think our way around the course. Uh, I know St. Andrews is, is fairly open, but there's definitely some holes you've got to think about. So hopefully we can get the ball in the fairway mm -hmm. and get it, get the job done. Yeah, well, we'll see how it goes here. This is, I mean, I know I haven't played a lot of virtual golf. I know this is that time of year now where virtual golf becomes more popular. Looked outside this morning and there was frost on the ground. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll get the round set up here. I think you got the honors, Thomas. All right, yeah, so I'm, uh, 
what is it, hole one, we've got here 366 yards. I have played this hole as, as I was doing some initial testing, and we kind of noticed it gets a little bit tighter there, about 83 yards yeah. out. So I'm actually going to start off with my driving iron to just oh, play safe, play so that safe. way I okay. don't uh, don't end up playing safe. In, the, right. in the berm on the, on the first tee right. shot. Also not very loose here, so. <laughs> Always a fun start, three iron off the off the deck for the first swing. But I the reason I'm doing that on this shot is I know I can't reach the trouble yeah. with this club. Hit a good one, I should leave myself at 120 yards out. Ooh. There we go. All right. It's, it's safe there. That's pretty safe to me. All right. So I'm, I'm curious now, Drew, to see what you do off the tee because oh, I, I, I know you like to hit driver a yeah. lot. I, I like to hit Are you going to play as conservative as I can I, play there? I or? think to get started, I got to get comfortable in a round before I'm like ripping driver. So I think I'm going to also hit uh, a, probably a four iron here. Uh, I know that might disappoint some, but we're gonna. <laughs> we're we'll be hitting some bombs. We'll, we'll get some here. drives in, uh, in, in us here. All right. And so you said you got four iron. You you play the I two tens, right? I've got a I two ten and I five hundred combo. That's right. For those uh, watching, you make so the you make the transition at, at six, six or iron. seven iron. Okay. Yep. So this is an I five hundred four iron. So and I've actually really liked these. Perfect. Uh oh, that's right. Stay in bounds. <laughs> I th think that's. That might be out of bounds, Thomas. <laughs> well, it's it's right it's right of the path there, but it didn't quite go all the way over there. So. All right. Well, you've got, hey, you've I'm, got a, I'm you've up got a fun next shot here. I'm up again. <laughs> the nice thing is, yeah, there's a couple holes where you can hit it on a different hole and still be in play. You yeah, got 172 which, yards, showing the wind at six miles an hour off the right, or off the right and into a little bit. So it's kind of swirling around. Okay, off the right and kind of into. Oh, just uh, noticing a comment here. It looks like Josh mentioned hit the driver every time. So <laughs> we, yeah. we might have to. It's only a simulator game, right? Well, if I'm hitting <laughs> forearm like this, I can't imagine where my driver is going to go. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens out of the rough. I've got a little six iron here. We'll see how this goes. I find it funny. He said Team Blue wouldn't lay up. That was actually a really good shot. Yeah, it'll work. Yeah. All right. Let's see what your We're chipping's like on a yeah, on a simulator here. Is gonna be interesting. All right. So I got 131 yards. And looks like the wind's helping just a little bit. About well, seven miles an hour. Or maybe just a little off the right. It's kind of swirling around a little bit. We're gonna have to. Uh, that was a complete bailout. That was a bad swing. Thomas. Well, we'll see how good our chipping is. Oh, we got to work on the short game here. I, I thought the wind was going to help him a little, but it kind of was going to all over the place. Mm -hmm. So, clearly, the wind did not come off the right on that shot. Who's, uh... Oh, I think you. I'm still okay. out. All right, so we've got 30, 32 yards. This looks complicated. <laughs> I'll do a little chip and run. Steve, I see your chat here. We're going to get to that here after Thomas hits this one. We get a, submitted a question here. Bump and run. Greens are a little slow. That's going to be probably a bogey because we have it set at. Well, I think we, you're right. Yeah. That was bad. All right. See if Drew can take the lead. 
I, I, I would love a lead against you. There is a, <laughs> Thomas, there's a question here from Steve. Okay. Um, got it shown there for you. If I swing the Hulk 60 gram 6.5 TX in my driver, I don't quite have the swing speed, but I hit it longer and more accurate than any 6.0 shaft. How do you explain outcome compared to swing speed? I mean, it's, uh, it definitely comes down to the direction. It's like your distance versus your d dispersion. If you're able to um, hit the ball fairly straight, <coughs> even with a shaft that's maybe a little heavier than what you should be playing, I'm all for it. Generally speaking, I'd say play the lightest golf shaft that you can, that you can play um, and, and control. But if you can't control that lighter shaft, then um, it's going to be a oh. little harder. It's always going to be player dependent, though. I what? Got, I buried my par putt. <laughs> that, that's, this is just, uh, this is not right. You are further outside me. So we have this set at PGA Tour average, and yeah. they gave you the chance, I guess, yeah. your odds I, that you were going to. I'm making my 27 make footer. So I, I guess I'm up then, huh? All right. Uh, I hope that answers the question there. Is the golf shaft, it's, you know, it's really player dependent. Everyone swings differently. Everyone loads the club differently. Right. All right. All right well, you have the honors. I know, I do. Nice 27 foot putt. It's, it's telling me to hit the ball 286 yards. So Driver. We're, we're going to go with a three wood. Oh, feeling confident after burying that 30 footer on the first hole. Mm, get right of the, uh, that's right, that's on the T. It's right on. of the T's, that's on. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, this is just, they're just uh, trying to help you out right now. It's in play. We're getting a glimpse of, I mean, the viewers are getting a glimpse as to how I play golf. <laughs> All right. Look at that. Just so money. <laughs> Just saving pars. I'll see, I hope I can hit a little straighter than that one. <laughs> our, our, our chat, too. Uh, Drew drops a bomb for par and is now one up against Thomas. <laughs> Stay out of that bunker. It's kind of coming back. That's All okay. Right. That's okay. I think I'm certainly out because... Looks like it pays to miss big here. Yeah, that's just <laughs> part of the game plan. Well, let's see how your blind shot works out for you here. 195 yards. Yeah, this will be interesting. Notice the comment power. here, check that head cover. Yeah, is, that, I know. is that Drew's head cover? That's my head cover. What head, is this like a, what it's is a, that driver? Some, some college friends and I have a, uh, a yearly get together. We call it the Cogswell Cup. So you got a three wood head cover there. Very cool. For that. All right, I've got my five iron here, 195. Hit that good. Too good. That'll be an interesting. Yeah, job. yeah, that's that's it's just up and down for par like last hole, Thomas. Probably. All right. How about Thomas? Thoughts on the heads up putting technique? More focus on the path to the hole versus the putter face hitting the ball. So I think that's kind of. Um, I mean, I mean, you know anything about that? Heard of that? I know I, I've heard a little bit about it. Uh, maybe it's like, you know, I think commenter could be a little bit more. Uh, I mean, could help us out a little bit in terms of what that is. Um, you know, I, do you know anything about that? I don't. So read that again. So heads up putting. Heads up putting technique. More focus on the path, where the putter face. Pass to the path to the hole versus putter face hitting the ball. Got it. Yeah, I um, could be, you know, when like uh, you know, when Jordan Spieth is you know, you know, looking, short putts, looking, he's looking at, at the, the hole. looking at the hole kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, 
So golf is a unique sport because it's the only sport you're looking like down. Yeah. You, know, you think about you shoot a basketball, you're looking at the target. Right. You're aiming towards the target. Yeah. And while you're looking down here and you hit a putt and you stay down, it's kind of an interesting thought, but it frees you up for sure. It mm -hmm. I think it definitely helps with, with distance control. Mm -hmm. um, those short putts, you can notice, you know, obviously Jordan Spieth is, you see occasionally four, three, four footer, he'll, he'll do that. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and it's, it's, not a, it's not an uncommon thing. I've seen more than just him. I think that's the name that comes to mind, at yeah. least when I've been seeing that. So. I think that's what he's talking about there. I hope he clarifies a little bit. All right, 158. Yeah, it did say clarified, looking at the path and then the hole while putting. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. This is straight down. Got the right misses today. Button though. Well, we'll see if it gives me a two putt or one putt this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Or, or a three putt. <laughs> 80 feet? 80 that's feet? A There's a you. good chance that's a three putt. That's a two putt for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, 40 yards for me. <laughs> that wind keeps swirling. I thought that wind was straight down, actually, it was out of the left. I don't like this shot. I have to go upstairs with this one. We got a question here. Do you use the virtual golf offset on TrackMan or do you align to the TrackMan to the center of the screen? We had san done center of the screen because we, we were hitting the testing before. Um, I haven't changed around my direction. You can use the mouse and change where you're trying to aim, um, but I just kind of ad have adjusted a little to the left or to the right. We could easily change our direction if we need to. Oh, I got a two putt par. Oh, uh -huh. two putt bogey. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's only fair. Yeah, it probably is pretty fair. It's only fair. All right. So what happens when you hit don't hit driver off the tee? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Drivers get pars. Three wood gets bogeys. All right. But yeah, this is this is a cool um, cool experience. Like I said, I've only played three holes virtually before. And the graphics are really good. I haven't played at St. Andrews, so mm -hmm. I don't really know yeah, the layout, but. I haven't been overseas myself, so <laughs> this is. All right, so this wind is off the left again. Let's aim a little further left. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, it is tailing left on you a little bit. Fairway though. And so uh, the other thing too, keep in mind, we're at sea level. St. Yeah. Andrews at, is at sea level there too. So that wasn't bad, 165 ball speed, the carry was only 270. Yeah. So. But what doesn't go as far when you're playing right, at that's sea true. level. Mm -hmm. yep. But I'll take that. I'll take I might have to rip driver now. It look, the hole looks a little bit more open here, right? All right. All right. Question here. Looking to purchase new wedges, I prefer to keep it low. What is the preferred bounce on wedges for an above average golfer playing Minnesota courses? Um, generally speaking, they're not super firm conditions here. So I'd say mid bounce is good because it gives you versatility. But I also have versatility in my, in my bag as well. So my bounces, no. Oh, that was lucky. Good thing you hit it that far. Oh, sit bull. Is it gonna go in? Don't do that uh -oh. to me. Don't do that to me. Uh oh. <laughs> I dodged it. <laughs> um, yeah, my, my wedge setup, I have an eight degree, a 10 degree, and a 12 degree bounce in all my three wedges. So I give myself a little bit of versatility. Wow, you piped that. I hit that pretty good. I did. Yeah, way past everything. All right, all right. 98. All right, when? That's actually a good idea. Brandon, Brandon says, if you guys need a third, I'm only 15 minutes away. That, that would be it's fun like to get, get a couple get, of our yeah. subscribers come yeah. play live. Yeah, we could do yeah, that. We could absolutely do that. That would be, uh, if, they're, if, if they're willing to be live. If you're comfortable with, you know, if you, if you watch me hit those shots way right, you know, <laughs> it might, you might be live while that happens. Yeah.
making sure that wind isn't swirled on me. 98 yards, Thomas Campbell trying to dial it in. Come back. Nope. Just a little deep. A little deep. Wind was definitely helping. That wind is kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of changing directions during your shot a little bit. All right, there's your chance to knock a close one right. in there. 57 yards I feel yards like we have away. a lot of Steve or Stevens in the chat right now. There's another Steven with a question. Popular name today. All right, what's the benefits of, yeah, thanks Steven for joining. Um, what's the benefits of a lighter iron shaft? My pitching wage goal is 150. Should I stick with a heavy and stiff? At 150, yeah, you definitely would need stiff or even extra stiff with regards to that, that much distance for your wedge. Oh. Now, that's as long as that pitching wedge isn't, say, a 42 or 43 degree pitching wedge that's causing the ball to go far. But if it's a traditional wedge and you're hitting it that far, um, I for sure would stick with mm -hmm. probably a, a heavier 120, 130 gram golf shaft. Yeah, I think yeah. you're certainly going to lose the control by going lighter. So it's just a matter of, I mean, if you're trying to get more distance and more swing speed. Yeah. But usually at that, if he's already said what he, he's already hitting his pitching wedge 150. So at that point, yeah. probably don't need more distance. So. Well, I, I hit my, my wedge carries 140. And I mean, I'm, I dropped from an X to a S400 golf shaft, but it's that shaft still weighs 132 grams. Yeah. So um, you want to flight your wedges. You want to control your wedge of your scoring, scoring clubs. If you want to flight them down, you need mm -hmm. a little heavier shaft. Okay. okay. All right, you're up next. I am, okay. 46 degree wedge, yeah. I would, I would stick with a heavier shaft. Uh, I would just be worried about the, the control with a lighter shaft and the spin and not being able to flight the ball as well. All right, we're gonna bring this guy out again. These are long par fours. Not a lot of length like this around in Minnesota. Hang on. This isn't quite the uh, U of M Les Bolstad distances. Now you might be in the bunker. Oh, now you're in the tree. <laughs> you probably would have been better off being See, in the bunker. This is the. Uh, this is the Drew Mahold I know. This is the yeah. <laughs> This is why driver doesn't come out of the bag, or <laughs> should not come out of the bag like this. All right. Did you play that wind? Did you see the wind direction on that shot? I did. Uh, I did. obviously didn't play it enough. Yeah. Chris asking to expand on that, who fits into the lightweight iron shafts, like Nippon 950. Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a good question. I, one thing, we do even just like a basic starting point is based on like your seven iron or your eight iron distance. If you hit your eight iron 150 yards, mm -hmm. that's when you're kind of around about stiff, stiff, fle stiff flex. Yeah. Anything less than that would probably consider maybe like a, a regular flex. Yeah. Uh, say 130, one, 130 maybe to 150. Maybe regular, yeah. And then if you're less than that, then you would go like even, even lighter. Okay. Um, that's kind of a good way to kind of yeah. start with based on your, on your distance. But keep in mind, it's going to depend on the clubs. Yeah, you're well, it depends too if the so players different. feel too. Like if they want yeah. maybe something a little bit lighter, but also this, that they need that stiff flex, then you know, right? It, there's that static kind of measurement as you're referring to, where it's kind of based on distance that you hit a club. But then after that, it's kind of the, the testing and the dynamic fit of yep. well, maybe they hit a certain flex and they need a little bit lighter things like that. So right, yeah, it's just a good starting point. <laughs> so that that was a drive that hits close to home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Playing the wind beautifully. That's All good. Right. Yeah, that'll work. Just my uh, my standard shot there. I actually, got a little bit of a release there. Yeah, I mean, uh, if this is hey, this is St. Andrews. This is Andrews, for yeah. Him. 282 carry going 324. It's not bad for me. Oh, a little, little, little difference on the map there in terms of where yeah. we're hitting from. <laughs> Steve asking about his custom order there, um, having some issues with recovering his clubs, which he's not the only one. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is it's 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 tough. I know the manufacturers have got a little bit better, but I know the supply chain is still pretty far out. Um, 
It is tough. And one thing I'll kind of say to that is second swing, we do have a lot of stuff in stock. <laughs> got, oh, got the tree branch. the bush. I was like, what is, okay. Um, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> what, you didn't know I was going to come out, but obviously you're in the I, tree. I was like, what? I thought, no, that makes sense. I didn't realize I was in the bush. Um, but yeah, it's, so at second swing, we do have a decent amount of, um, of clubs already in stock, ready to go, and they are new, not just used as well. But yeah, so it's it's hard, um, and it, it's to, a lot of it's to do with the golf shaft. So yeah, one thing it's, it's like it's, it's the it's the custom pieces that are yeah. you know sometimes it's been grip, sometimes it's the shaft. It's just it's you know those types of it's not necessarily the club heads sometimes, but yeah, yeah. it's just and we don't really know when that's going to get caught up. Like yeah, we're we're trying to work through that here at second swing, and that's why we've you know, try to get as much inventory in stock as we can because that way we can service the golfers that need their equipment. But yeah, it's, 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 it is difficult and we wish we had a better answer in terms of when things will get right there. But we have a fit list and do not fit list when it comes to heads and shafts and anything like that. Uh, one thing I would suggest with Steven there is to go on TaylorMade's website. I know it's not going to be purely accurate because it, it changes all the time. But look at the different shafts and to see what the lead time is. They might find a shaft there that is going to be around about the same weight that uh, yeah. might be two or three months faster. Mm -hmm. That's what I could say. I know Project X for a while there, were, they were pretty far out. Um, and a lot of, it, depend, it really depends on the golf shaft. Right. It's, it's really been really interesting. Mm -hmm. And then the grip was earlier. The grips aren't as bad anymore, but the grips to start out, that was one of the biggest thing is we would have to um, essentially order the club's grip in the box and Mm -hmm. and figure it out from there because that would be one thing that would hold the order stuff. So right, it's, it's exactly. Been interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, so 154. We got nine iron here. Wind a little bit out of the left. Let's see if I can judge the wind. That wind is kind of tailing out, but the draw is holding it steady. Oh, that was a good shot. That's a good shot. Right on top of the flag there. Well, I have to. Good carry distance. Just released I out a little bit on the ground me. to make up here. You do, yeah. You just gotta kind of get yourself back in play here, and hopefully, don't make too much big of a number. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I like to make big numbers sometimes. <laughs> Got some more. Perfect. I'm going to answer some questions here. KBSC taper light in the P770s. Um, hard step. Yeah, that might be where it gets a little bit um, interesting there. We've got 110. We've got Modus. 105 would be something to consider. Now that would be a little, just a touch lighter, especially if you're trying to um, hard step it a little bit. Mm. Um, I know Modus, they've been doing pretty well with regards to turnaround time. Um, I'm trying to think what else there might be. 120 gram, maybe like a true temp or dynamic gold 120 would be another one that you could look at. It'd be worth at least uh, maybe reaching out whoever ordered the clubs for you to see if you can help get help to change that order. All right, uh, five wood heads are generally a touch smaller. Um, probably a double question here. The five woods and three wood heads are similar in size, yes. Uh, agree, Jacob. Uh, five wood heads are smaller in CC size, probably about 10 or 15 CCs smaller than a three wood head. Uh, one more here before I. Oh, we're both finishing up. Two, Two putt putts. par for you. One oh. putt. Oh, you got lucky there. I'm. That I'm was money. Good, that the putter's hot today, Thomas. Game. All right, one the more question here. Today. 75 <laughs> mile an hour, seven iron. Am I right between reg and stiff flex? Always not sure I'm going to give up by using each. Um, yeah, I usually say up to 70 miles an hour. 70 to 80 is what, what I would normally say is like regular mm -hmm. flex. 80 to 90 is like stiff. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's probably at the top right. end these are, regular. I mean, it's generally, you know, we, we talk about tempo yep. too, but. And keep in mind, some regular shafts are heavier than others, and some stiff shafts are lighter than others. Right. So that's why it's important. But yeah, 75 mile, miles an hour, I'd say your bottom end of stiff, top end of reg. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. 
All right, driver. Does someone make a three wood with adjustable line loft? Yeah, I, I mean, I think all the major. Taylor made when you can take the, the hosel out and adjust that around. Mm -hmm. uh, that will um, change the line loft if you open it. Yeah, put I know some are kind of going away. It depends, you know, like some of the, 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 the fairy woods that are aimed at forgiveness kind of yeah. have that taken out because they can save some weight that way. Taylor made tightless ping. Yeah. Tightless has got the short fit hosel, ping's got their flatter setting that yeah. you can they can do yeah um, i mean there's there's callaway i mean they, there's three woods all yeah. over that yeah. have that still okay it's playing that little that wind again that's a really good drive that is a really good drive well done. All right. At least my fairway stats are probably looking a little bit better than, yep. than yours right now. Yep. I'm a little <laughs> gun shy right now in <laughs> driver, but we'll see. I'll give it one more crack. It's, I mean, what do you got to lose? You've got other fairways out there to Well, hit, apparently right? it's, it's not out of bounds if you go three holes <laughs> over, so. Hang on. Hang on. Closer. There you go. Look at that. There Split the fairway in half. Uh, yeah, so following up on Alex's question here, I'd like to get the TSI 3 18 degree head. Um, it's not identical. The TSI 3 18 degree head is a little bit smaller than the 15 or the 16 and a half degree head. Right. Um, besides a putter, what would a bag on average cost, used versus new? It, there's, there's so many variables there. Um, right. If, you, if you've seen some of our videos, we've even put together like a, a budget yeah, challenge we've been starting out used out from 500 to $1,000. I'll, I'll say this, used clubs have got, a, got just like used cars, the, the value of used clubs have definitely kind of gone up a, yeah. a little bit with uh, COVID. But generally speaking, wedges are around about $150 each new. Um, generally speaking, irons, if you're looking at the game improvement category, you're looking at about $125 per iron. If you're looking mm -hmm. in, the, in the more player's iron category, you're 165 175 a club. Um, and then uh, hybrids, 200 250 Yeah. Uh, Fairy woods, 300 and drivers, about 500 So if you right. piece together, say, a driver or three, this is new. This is new. Yeah, uh, new. A we driver, a fairway talking, wood, yeah. a hybrid, you're looking at about $1,000 there for, for those clubs. Say you go then go four iron through wedge. Uh, say say a little more gamey clubs. One twenty five times eight is about a th uh, about a thousand dollars. It's mm -hmm. two thousand plus wedges, three wedges. I mean, you're talking yeah, you're talking twenty five hundred. Twenty two to twenty five hundred for yep. new. For new. So yeah, I mean it's you know it's it's a, it's an investment in your game for for new stuff for sure because yep. you're gonna get the custom fitting and the tour van experience here and. It's just and our know. tour round fittings are free with purchase. Right. So even our used fittings, our, our second swing fittings, are free with purchase as well. So yep. that's one thing that we'll save, and we actually are also very highly recommended by a lot of people, including yeah. my golf spy, which recently had us rated just as high as the yeah. manufacturers. Yeah. So yeah. We should. We talked about that survey last yeah. Thursday. Highest retail um, store in the U.S. So when it comes to fittings, and we do it for free. Okay. Three iron. Maybe. So may maybe. <laughs> I don't carry a three iron, but I'll go four iron. I do carry a three iron, sorry, it's the utility three. Oh, that was a bad swing. That's one we haven't practiced in a while. Oh, that's, it'll be an adventure over there. At least it went the right distance. <laughs> it did. Um, that's been my miss with my longer irons. How about the ideal attack angle for a fairy wood shot? Off uh, the turf. Basically zero. Off the turf. Oh, Just or, zero. Or minus, minus a half, yeah. I guess. Zero Basically minus neutral. Yeah. yeah, basically neutral. You're basically trying to bottom out that club at impact. Right. You know, whereas, yep. like, driver, driver, you're kind of trying to hit up on hit it up a little on the bit. Ball. Yep. 
mm -hmm. depending on the player. But yes, generally speaking, you want to hit up on the ball to give yourself a little bit more higher launch and lower spin. All right, I've got 211, wind off the left. And make sure I play the wind this time. I hit that fat, Thomas. At least it's a little straighter. Chase up there. It's going to get that chase down up slope. There. It might chase up there. All right. Uh, just answering, yes, uh, Keith, we're actually using the RCT balls today. Um, so we've been testing with them for the last week. Uh, Trackman rep sent them to me about a week ago to test with. Mm -hmm. And last week we've been testing with them. And they're very, very accurate. Um, yeah. Haven't seen any telesized spin or anything like that. Now, we would use the same ball over and over and over and over and over. Just like any golf ball that gets worn, that's when you start noticing kind of a little bit. But right. we're talking like you can't even see, couldn't even see the logo on yeah. the, on anything. So. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, we've definitely noticed the difference, and so I, I mean, we're like I said, we're working on making sure we can try to get that into our fittings here. Yeah. I know it's the challenge a is with our team. You know, so Minnetonka, for example, we have 13 bays with track van in them. Right. We have six, technically eight tour van bays. I think tour van for sure will. Right. You know, tour van fitting, right now. Oh, our goal would be to obviously get those in mm -hmm. there. My goal is to get them in there because I know mm -hmm. that they're going to be reliable and uh, it's going to be important, but mm -hmm. they're, ex they're expensive. Yeah. They're, what, $70 a, well, yeah, a dozen? I mean, it's, and it's yeah, important. I kind of kind of wish that, I mean, TrackMan and Titleist would, you know, kind of include that maybe in a little bit with, with the unit, but maybe, maybe they'll get there. Yeah. This doesn't look like a fun shot. Thirty-five yards. Thirty-five yards. I got my, my PM hill. grind here out of the thick rough, off the tight lie. <laughs> yeah. Of the turf, but we'll see how this comes out. Got to play it like it's a, a flop shot. Ben. That was pretty good. Eight feet, 11 inches. So it'll be interesting to see if I get given that or not. Yeah, I, I, you sh I mean, what was that? Is it the, the rules eight feet, right? No, they're, we're playing the PGA Tour averages. So that's oh, they're basically I see. guessing and calculating and giving you the odds. All right, up the hill here. Might be too far. <laughs> yep, might be a little, little too far. It stopped pretty quick for you though. I, hit, I clipped that perfectly, but those grooves still pretty, they, in pretty good shape. <coughs> I've used them a lot this year, but yeah, they're okay. Well, there's one thing to keep in mind is if those grooves are nice and sharp and don't have dirt in them, bull right. might grab for you a little bit easier. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> This is just not fair. <laughs> is it going to be me or you off the tee here? Uh, it, mm, uh, who had the honor last hole? Was it you or me? Good question. It might have been me. Uh, Go to follow up real, real quick while we do out the flyby. Um, Eric here, thoughts on how the I-210s are holding up compared to the 2021 iron releases? Uh, yeah, they've been holding up really well. I210 ping, uh, probably one of my favorite, uh, probably my favorite club to fit with for those golfers that need a little bit more height and a little bit more spin. Um, there's a reason why ping hasn't come out with anything new yet, um, but uh, yeah, they've been holding up really well. Uh oh, come on, between them again. Nope. Uh, question here. I feel like I'm outgrowing G400 irons pretty quickly. Apex Pro 21, way too big of a jump. G400 is Apex Pro. Um, I mean, you're going from like a, a game improvement to uh, kind of in between a, a, a game iron, a game to a distance player's iron. Yeah. Uh, it, it's probably pretty close. Um, you, you, player's distance iron, maybe like a. Callaway, like mm -hmm. Apex, if you're yeah. thinking Callaway, or P790, maybe. 
but and, and that's probably the right jump, you know? Yeah. Dep it depends on how good your ball striking is with yeah. your irons. Um, but it's not like you're going to a full on blade. Like the Apex Pro is it's, I mean, it, like it's, it's blade blade. The type of player, I mean, if you're trying to kind of, like if you're setting up to, you know, the pins on the right side and you're trying to work a fade in there, you're going to do a lot better job of that with an Apex Pro. I mean, if you're that type of player where you're at that point in your game, you can try to shape a shot into the green. That's where you might then, maybe you are that player's cavity type category. Right. right? So yeah. it's kind of like if you go up to a shot and you're like, I'm trying to shape it this way or this way, and that's how skilled you are, then maybe that's where you're at with your game. Yeah. So. I mean, the club's clearly it's not going to be as forgiving, but it's going to be more workable. Right. It's, but as I mentioned, you're not taking the, the big step to going from a, to a blade, and that would be, right. that would be too, too far to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Driver, again. You're beating me by two shots. <laughs> I, you know, hey. <laughs> I'm going to have to stop stepping the game up a little bit. I think this has been a little bit unbiased so far. Well, in a couple I, of those I've putts. just made a couple of bombs. <laughs> at the, I mean, I, like I said, the putter's hot, you know? <laughs> they must have seen my putting all year this year. Uh -oh. Like draw gonna come back here. This is probably trying end up to. in a bunker. Come on, to. miss the bunker. Oh, you carried it. All right. That draw tried to. I think the wind just held off the draw a little bit there. It did. Well, I thought it was coming a little off the right, but thought it wrong. Yeah. The Apex Pro. I like the numbers. The Apex Pros do look awesome, Brandon. That's uh, you know, I, I when we initially tested those, I was I love the look of them. So that's you know. Yeah, they definitely look. A little bit more blade blade like compared to the 19s. The Apex Pro 19s are a little bit, a little bit thicker, um, but they definitely look really good. At 134, wind off the left. Little pitching wedge. That's fat. Yeah, Might Brandon, uh, seven through pitching wedge on the Apex Pros. Love how they look. Yeah, yeah. I would definitely do consider that, and then even do Apexes in like four through six. That would be uh, something to consider. And Callaway do have that option to combo. Wow, I got the uh, fringe. Another question here about the the RCT ball. There's a, I mean, a lot of people asking about that ball actually. Yeah. Uh, if, we're, if we're using it, yes, we are using the RCT ball. Um, we've been using it for a week. Mm -hmm. Really, really good uh, results. Haven't seen a single telesized spin or anything, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. One oh eight. Wind. We slightly into off the left. Yeah. She going to go fifty two and hit a little. Nine o'clock swing. A little flighted shot. Oh, oh wow. That's interesting that one came out quite a bit shorter. Hmm. Well, we both got this really kind of weird, I'm not really sure how to handle this. Right. One. I can't say I'm very good at chipping on the simulator. <laughs> it's just, I mean, there's, uh, that's the, there's no sense of feel on those shots. Yeah. So. Is this me? That's I have to hit you. this shot? Oh my. At least you've got a good read. I can see where the green's breaking. Oh, geez. Um, hmm. I don't know how hard uh, to hit a shot this, like this. 26 yards. Chris here mentioned, I believe this workability thing is a myth. Good golfers can manipulate shots with most clubs. It is, is a spin retention, though, loft better, better players look for. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're right. Better players can <laughs> work so a little better. So no. But the golfers that fit into a more game improvement iron, uh, they, you know, they, they don't know how to work the ball as well. And that's why they need a little more game improvement iron. Um, but generally speaking, it is harder. You still got to manipulate it a little bit yeah. more t 
for a club that's got the CG. I mean, it's, it's center of gravity. It's that's center that's gravity, what it comes yeah. down to. You yeah. know, center of gravity on these kind of game improvement clubs is yeah. so low that it it promotes kind of launch into the air and kind of straight. And then if you have that center of gravity kind of lifted or maybe more forward, that's when you know the the ball tends to kind of more go or go more offline. So you're able to work it that way then. Yeah. Yeah, it's tends to have more curve on it. Yeah, depending more curve on it. Yeah. So I know we've noticed that in testing irons and stuff. Like it's y your draw shows up more, you know, with those kind of right. players. Right. Yeah, it seems like because I like to draw the ball with my irons. I'm not seeing that today, but I like to draw the ball <laughs> with my irons. Um, and when we do testing, like we do, like a complete line of of irons, say it's ultimate, right? You know, ping or tight list or Kelly or whatever. What we notice is the more game improvement irons can stay to the right for me, mm -hmm. and the more blade yeah. irons the shorter left, and the other ones are kind of a little further to the right, or straight, and then yep. just left of center, or just left, because right. I like to draw the ball. So that's mm -hmm. one thing we've kind of noticed. Keep coming up short. So ball, the ball just the, grab. You've got the green grabbing on us here. It happened yeah. to me too. Uh, I might have given you another shot. <laughs> it would be a shame, I tell you. Right. I two putt bogey, two putt bogey. My uh, luck is going to run out eventually with the putter. That hurt. Yeah, I mean, we've got a green set at like eight, so it's probably a little, true. Uh, not, little slow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do we got, par three here? I feel like it's like the first par three we've played. Well, I know St. Andrews is set up unique where it's, I think there's, Two par fives, two par threes, and all par fours after that. Right. Uh, no, we got a par four. We were on hole seven. Okay. Hmm. It's like driver might be too much. Question here. Full bag right. fitting in one day or do a split between two? I would be traveling. Um, it's going to come down to fatigue. Yeah. Uh, you, it's going to come down to the player and how... Um, how in depth they really want to go and how many shots they want to hit with each club. Uh, you can absolutely split it up. It still would be free with purchase whether you split it up in two sessions or all try and do it at once. People can do it um, in, in one session. It's you know, two and a half hours of, of hitting shots. But if you want to split it up, absolutely we can. And a lot of times too, if I have a player sign up for a f full bag fitting and we hit, we start with the irons, we hit driver, and you start seeing that fatigue kind of start and set in yeah. already. And, I, and I'll say like, hey, I want to make sure I get this right for you. You're, you've come here to get, get, a, get a good fitting. I want to make sure this is right. I want to make sure that you're not fatigued when the fitting is going on. Uh, and I'll say, let's come back and finish it up. They may want to try and complete it, but I'll say, hey, I want to get this right. Right. I mean, so that's, that's one. I mean, you always tell people like, be prepared to hit you know, a lot of golf shots in a fitting. It's not going to be this like, you're on the course and you get a hit a shot. You know, get take your break. Maybe go hit some putts up on the green right. and then hit another. Shot. I mean, it, you're kind of you're hitting some shots. So yeah, I mean that's one of those things just to be ready for in a fitting. So I, yeah, I will say happens. like it's natural to have that fatigue set in. After so. seeing the iron fitting and the drive fitting, I know what they would fit into for the, for the most part. I know what club they should be playing, but the golfers will want to test those and, and make sure they, they see yeah. that. And that's where we have that conversation. Like, well, you know, trust me. If you're fatigued, trust me, we've got a 30-day play guarantee at second yeah, swing. You can always change, change it out. Or come back. No, yeah. no problem to set up another appointment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, 361 yards. I uh, got away with one there on that tee shot, by the way. Butch says he has a, fa a basement full of second swing boxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. To, that's good to see. It's good to hear. It'd be kind of fun to see a picture of that. That would actually. That'd be great. Where am I going here? I go a little aim a little left here, or is that got me aimed in the trees? It's kind of a unique setup on this hole here. I must say, I usually don't do very well on. Uh, link style courses because the the visual I'm trying to line up line up like There's if I'm no playing tree a tree line yeah. course you can kind of visually shape the shot a right. little bit I mean you piped that one that, that was, was pretty good right but I don't know like what green I was going towards there I know a lot of double greens here well, at it St. has Andrews, a theme to that right pin right 
I was like, oh, I'm going to drive the green. Nope, it's 50 yards short. Ninety-four yards. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna jump back while you're hitting here. Uh, TXG came out with RCT video today. I would guess that might spark some more discussion. Uh, yeah, I've actually I actually watched a few minutes of that video. Uh, I think that's it's important to show you know how accurate both devices are. I mean, one thing we kind of notice is the spin rate is basically identical. The ball speed is basically identical as long as we're using in the right environment. Um, I like using Foresight, I like using TrackMan because they both give accurate numbers. Uh, one thing I did notice was interesting with their video was the, cl the club speed discussion is Foresight picks up club speed a little bit faster than TrackMan. Track yeah, and so I mean, I know the thing you've said is just the ball speed is ball gonna speed. be accurate. Yeah. You know? And then we noticed that in when we did kind of some testing with the Bushnell Launch Pro versus TrackMan, that video is gonna come out soon, but uh, we tested it out and saw what the numbers would be and the ball speed every time was basically the same. Yeah. I mean, it was just decibel differences, you know, so. Yeah, that video is coming out tomorrow, actually. Um, so that'll be, that was, mm -hmm. you know, we noticed the driver with, just kind of like what they noticed with, with uh, Foresight, is the ball lower spinning drivers release, goes out, carries a little bit further with Foresight versus TrackMan. Yeah. And I think Ian actually mentioned in their video that he believes that Foresight is overestimating how far the driver is going really? compared to outside a little bit there too. Interesting. So I think it'd be interesting to see a follow up and I, you know, I want to do a little more testing there too, but right. our initial testing with the Bushnell Launch Pro and say the, the GC3 or the same unit, they're the same, got the same, same hardware, technology. Yeah. Um, is, is really pretty, very, very similar. Yeah. We're talking the spin rates where I mean, we had, we had like driver 20, swings, 30. You know? we had yeah. our wedges, when wedges were up over 10,500 RPM, but they were within, you know, 20. Yeah. Like, it was insane. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, they I think it was really different, good. different methods of capturing the, the data, but it's yep. accurate either way. Yeah. All right, 59 yards. Nine yard shot. See how good this is. Nope. Spin. There is a feel element to this that we're kind of missing out on here. Oh, well, hopefully it doesn't give me a <laughs> three putt. We'll see what they tell us here. There's two their, putt. the two putt for two you, putt. two putt for me. It's too close to the grain there. Fernando asking, Apex Pro 21 versus the T100S, which of the two has more forgiveness? It's a good question. The Apex T100, Pro so the T100S is basically the T100. Yeah. And I think it is stronger, right? Yeah, it's 32 degrees loft on the T100S. Okay. 33 on the Apex Pro. Uh, ZX, so ZX, switch on ZX7, Apex Pro, T100X, P770, they all kind of fit in that, that same category. Yeah, they're just a little bit, you know, they're, they're players irons, but they're a little bit stronger to give just a tad more distance. Yeah. So um, Apex Pro, I feel like I, when I remember the testing on that, it was pretty, your, your dispersion I remember was really good. Um, there. You have, that's a good idea for a test though, is kind right. of get all those together, you know, with the T100S. Right. Like the early Apex 2021 Pro, and the late you know, 2021 releases. P770, get all those in a test, that's a good idea, so. Maybe we'll have that answer for you, a, a more specific answer for you, Fernando. Yeah, I, think, I feel like they're so close. They're going to be really like, close. They're yeah. really, really close. I yeah. will say from what I remember, the Apex Pro has a louder sound. I remember that. Yeah, it's a little louder sound. So and you're going to get more of that soft kind of, softer. you know, that, that softer noise that a forged iron would give you with the T100S. So. Yeah. yeah, that's a good, uh, good comparison there. All right, I've got 165. Wind off the right this time. You've been going off wind off the left this whole round. Yeah, I'm following up here. Um, Mav or I felt pretty fatigued even after a proper driver fitting. Yeah, a dri proper driver fitting is going to be 40 to 50 driver swings. You don't hit 40 to 50 driver swings in an hour on the golf course. You hit 14 drives right. in four hours on the golf course. You're going to get fatigued. 
you try and follow that up with another fitting, yeah, it, it can be a lot. Mm -hmm. And it depends on your physical ability if you're trying to do it all at once there too. One sixty-five. I hit a little bit of a pull hook with my. Uh, Got a lot of clubs over here. <laughs> Just bringing them over. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wind. All right. This has got to be eight iron. For Juan Jose, um, asking for a driver for an eighteen handicap who misses a right. Well, there's a lot of those draw bias ones out there. To, to look at, so. Right, and we just did a video on that actually. Um, we actually had a new contributor, mm -hmm. Skylar. Um, she's probably about an 18 handicap yeah. golfer. Um, we just did a max draw bias test and we tested mm -hmm. TaylorMade Sim to Max D, the, uh, the Rad Speed, um, XD and the SFT, Ping G425 SFT. Yeah. So there's a lot and of those with this more weight in the heel. Maverick Max, that club we over. put the weight in the heel. Yeah. Yep, that too, so. Those would be the four for 2021 that I would recommend looking at. Oh, that was struck well. Now the wind's coming out. Look at that wind, it's just picking yeah, up on me. Yeah, the wind is out of the right now. <laughs> That's like right by my ball. Yeah. I think you're a little closer than me though. All well, right. That was like the first like comes down draw to the pots here. today. I kind of wish we were putting. Might might give you a chance to catch you. You would be beating me if we. <laughs> three putt yeah, bogey. Three putt. That's okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I knocked it inside you again, and it gave me another three putt. <laughs> yeah. Well, I. You must be on the tee. So we got this is the if I remember hole nine, or at least from watching you know golf over the years, hole nine is a somewhat drivable par four which means I am definitely going to make a mistake here, but I'm going to hit driver. I think you're going to pipe it right like, down the middle. I think it's like 350 something. Yeah, 347. Oh, this is, this is, <laughs> this is with the dry fairways, this is go zone. Um. Off the toe, is it going to come back? Yeah, gear effect right there. Come on, get in that little, no, it's fine. That's right in the spot there. Nice drive. That'll work. Um, good mor morning, Dylan. Thanks for joining us. Uh, side stig, my swing speed is around 78. What would be the difference between a regular flex steel and a regular flex graphite shaft? Depends on the steel weight and steel and the graphite weight, but mm -hmm. generally speaking, it's going to be a softer feel. It's going to be lighter. It's going to help dampen vibrations a little bit. It's going to fly a little bit higher and spin a little more. Sure. That's a graphite shaft. Yeah. The steel shaft's going to be a little heavier. Uh, you may feel a little bit more. You may feel like you have better control on it a little more at yeah. times too, depending on the player. Because there is kind of a, an element to the graphite shaft where kind of you, I'm trying to put this into words, but like you almost, when you're swinging, if you're swinging fast enough, you don't really know where the club is. It kind of feels like you're just, you're swinging nothing, you know, yep. if it's, it's one of those light enough ones. At least after you hit that compared to hitting a steel, you definitely have better, like it's, you feel it more in your hands anyway, so. It is, a lot of it is feel, but then also performance-wise, like you said, you're going to get a generally kind of lower, more controllable ball flight with steel shaft. Yeah, and keep in mind that graphite regular, we're talking 60 to 80 grams, yeah. and steel 80 to 100, right. up to 100, and you'll, 125. And if you're looking for a yeah. smooth feel, that graphite's going to give you a smoother feel. You know, yeah. it's, it is more like rigid with the, the steel shaft, so. Right. Oh, that's a good question. I'll let you hit your tee shot and we'll talk about that one. All right. That's a good one. Oh, that was hit good. Don't go it's hanging on. It's hanging on. Big bounce. Oh, that big <laughs> bounce toward the bunker. Ooh. Oh, boy. I think I'm actually out here, technically. But so I'll let you answer this question. So <laughs> we got a debate here. Settle this once and for all. Fades, is a fade swing bad? Why chase the draw, somebody's asking. No, yeah. fade's actually easier to control. 
So a uh, draw is going to go further because the ball spins less. A draw can go further offline because it can turn into a, a hook. Um, a big hook is going to go pretty for a far offline. But I know what that's if like. you slice the ball, so if it's an over, basically more than a, more than a fade, that's when you sacrifice a lot of distance. Stop. Oh, it didn't stop on me. I did hit that a little bit chunky. But I didn't, okay. There's another three putt for you. I'll probably give you a one putt. 64 feet. <laughs> <laughs> there's like, I mean, I'm just picturing the courses in Minnesota that I play, and there's just not even like a situation where I'd have a 65 foot putt. By the way, I've never played a bunker shot on the simulator before, so I have no idea yeah, how this, this could come be. Out. I, I don't know if you just play it as I a... I mean, I got 52 yards. Do I just play it like as a big flop shot? I, I, don't, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Am I going to get it out of the bunker? Am I too close to the lip? This is supposed to be set on easy. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the lip I hit that bunker. good, too. The lip of the bunker is there. <laughs> oh, no. You hit that, I mean, you, I, I you, mean, hit, it, I you hit it perfect. It was just, yeah. That's Is funny. that out of the bunker? Is that great? Is that in the rough? You only switch my club. It says to sand. Like, <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> at least, hit, at least a 60 degree wedge. Try that. It says you're in the sand still, but it looks like it's also <laughs> in the rough. I don't know. It says I'm in the sand still? <laughs> oh, boy. Ouch. Pop bunker on the lip. Yep. This is where we're at. <laughs> All right, that's At least out. I got out that time. It's a pretty good shot. Hell yeah. All right. This game's rigged. <laughs> that would be classic. Come on, just give me a one putt. Classic if they gave you the par here. Two putt, that's, that's an unrealistic two. There oh, we go. good save. <laughs> a really good par. <laughs> that was a great, great save. Wow. <laughs> So All right, so we're, we're nine holes through, right? We are nine holes through. I'm three down. This is uh. Wow. This is gonna have to be a pretty good back nine run we for me. Probably don't have time for the entire back nine. Otherwise, we got to be picking up uh, or uh, moving quickly through some of these questions. <laughs> but right, we'll see what we got here. I've got to have enough time to catch you. That's true. You, you, you <laughs> wouldn't. We'll hit the driver here. Why not? Thanks, uh, Butch. Great show, guys. Here, not sure there's anything close to here. We, we do our best. Our team behind the, behind the scenes do a great job to help us out, uh, make the videos look great. And these lives are a lot of fun. Wind off the left again. That might be a slice. Stop it. Yeah, that's fine. Oh! <laughs> You've just been dodging trouble all day. And then I'm making 30 <laughs> footers for par. <laughs> That's how you beat Thomas in golf, is just to get really lucky. What we need to do is we actually need to go to St. Andrews and play. That yes, would we be do. The, because then it wouldn't be close. That'd be a, that'd be a little fairer, I think. Maybe. Can we, can we put that into our content budget? Yeah, we can try to work that out. <laughs> I'm going to say probably not. <laughs> Can dream big, right? Oh, that's another good question. Yep. Oh, it's come on, wind. <laughs> <laughs> I swear that was coming back. <laughs> Interesting. Face angle is closed, I guess. Um, here's a question. Buying a new set of G425 irons, I use Cleveland wedges right now. Do you recommend getting the, the wedges from the set into, it's like the lob wedge, sand wedge from the G425 irons, or staying with the, staying with the Cleveland wedges? Depending on your skill level. Um, yeah. And when we're, when we're talking about those irons, I'd say gap wedge with the set if you do, um, if you hit a full swing with that club, if it's more of a, a gap, Gapping club, 
if you generally speaking like to chip with those clubs, yeah. I would go with the more versatile options like your Glide 3.0s okay. or your Tyson bulky wedges. Yeah. But if you're just one swing, one dimensional golfer, yeah, you can go yeah. with If you set. manipulate the face on your wedge shots, you yep. kind of like to get creative open, hit the flops, then you want to actually get, you know, the the fit like the the wedge specific clubs, you know, right. like we're yep. whereas basically the G425 wedges are irons, they're just lofted like wedges. So right. yep. if you're just if you're square like normal face shots, probably go with the the wedges from the iron set is, I guess, what you're referring to. Yeah, I'd say the higher the handicap, yeah, you would go to keeping the irons more over the set. Yeah. Uh, the lower, you, the better your skill level with uh, with your wedge game, you're gonna want more, more workability. Yeah, specialty wedges. Specialty wedges. Yeah. yeah. All right, 108. <laughs> the, great, the great fade draw they said for that tee shot. Right. I swear that was, <laughs> it was coming like back. It looked like it was coming back, and then the wind was out of the left. He's got that hard 50 mile an hour gust from the right, you know. Wind's out of the left, right? Okay. Good distance on that one. All right. Button. Have to wait for you to make a mistake. I'm. I've made mistakes. I just haven't <laughs> been punished for them. Yeah. The cheapest launch monitor, a good quality to set up at home. It's a good question. Um, it really the, depends on what you, what kind of yeah. stuff you're looking for. So and they're saying, I mean, you're saying, you know, GC quad is too expensive. Um, I mean, you have. Well, yeah, it's, it's $18,000. Right. With your, with so your there's, you know, numbers. Bushnell Launch Pro looks Launch Pro, looks GC3, like it is I mean, they're just that, coming and Even out, if you want to go a little cheaper, Skytrack's got some really good options, too. Skytrack, those are available on Sexman.com, too. The so. Mevo as well mm -hmm. is, is uh, actually, I believe, they're coming out for the Mevo Plus beginning next year, where it's actually going to include club data for an extra $1,000. Um, you can go as, mm -hmm. as cheap as the uh, R10, I guess. You've got the Garmin R10. Right. And that's around about five to $700. That's a good shot. Go a little bit. Oh, it's zip in back there. on me. But yeah, there's such a there's such a wide range, but you definitely do pay for you get what you pay for. for yeah. For accuracy. Yeah, sure. I mean, you can check out the the swing report on our channel on the Garmin R10. You know, there was, there's you know that's a really kind of I mean it's six hundred dollars retail. We got, you know, so there was most of it was accurate, especially on like seven iron wedges. We had a little bit of discrepancy on driver, I think, but overall, it's really handy. You can set it up, and then there's additional features to connect it to E6 software, things like that. Yep. That could be really good for it. So, all right, all what right. we got here? We were both the exact same uh, distance. I think mean, it's like off by point, like point one of a feet, well, a foot right there on those last two pots, both two pot pars. Okay. 169. I think the wind is into and off the left. I'm going to hit a little seven iron. See how that goes. So I'd be curious on Sky. I haven't done much with Skytrack. So I know Skytrack here. Skytrack is great for small spaces. Not great if you switch between left and right golfers playing together. Um, we're talking like inside with, what about like lighting, I'm guessing. Um, curious what the radar system works. All right, now it's going to be interesting to see how good you get out of the bunker. <laughs> if only we could simulate the stance I'd have, I'd be like doing one of these. Yeah. All right. I am not going left on this shot. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I would recommend it yeah. to not go left. Oh, that's a good point. On the, yeah, the left What's and right. I have one of my... One of my friends has a sky track and it's the same thing because I got some left-handed friends and it's always a hassle and you can't really... Well, isn't it? It's radar kind of based though, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of so like it's, a well, trackman, but... It's, yeah, it's just, again, it's the setup, the setup, setup part. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's the one downside with, say, the Launch Pro is if you have a left hand right hand, you have to pick it up and put it over here, but it... it right. It depends on your space. If you've got a w wide enough room, you might want to... You can always go look at something that mounts higher. Mm -hmm. I know uh, when I was looking at different systems, we got uh, Unicore. Unicore, uh, there's a couple of different options that with them. They, they mount up higher okay. as well for left and right handed golfers. You can play without yeah. even moving anything around. Yeah, this is that time of year though. I mean, it's getting, there was frost on the ground this morning. People are uh, trying to figure out ways to continue playing golf. We 
Leave it alone, you're, wind. You're just not going left, which is the smart play. It is drawn back a little bit, though. Well, that looks like it was going to fade, and then it kind of, like, that's the fade well, draw again. That's a really good shot. Yeah. You know? Now I can sit It is back a little bit of a guessing game in terms of just, like, figuring out the wind and all that right now. Um, I'm not going to, that's not my excuse for my shot, because... <laughs> So I just straight up chunk hook. And now I can sit back and watch. Uh, so I don't even know what I do. Do I go backwards? Here. I think. That would. I mean. We're just gonna see what happens. <laughs> you can change your aim if you want to go further to the right. What do you want to? You got you got sixty right? 56? I do. Have, I have my fifty-eight degree right 58? now. Fifty-eight. Okay. So. This. I mean, I don't this, think this is possible. This could be the turnaround that I'm looking for. This, uh, yes. Well, we'll. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll, give it, we'll give it the college try here. Just open it way up here. No chance. No chance. <laughs> I think I'm these, still uh, in too. These bunkers are tough. I'm still in the bunker, too. <laughs> this is a little bit more realistic. All right. One more try here. All right, there we go. You're out. All right. Watch now. You'll give you like a one putt, and it'll give me a two putt. That would, that would, that would <laughs> you would hate to see that happen. <laughs> two putts. Two putts. Two putts. All right. All right. There you <laughs> the go. Match is back on. <laughs> We're closer now. And you got the box. All right. I didn't realize I was like seven over. All right. This time I'm gonna play that wind. Oh yeah. It's, I don't really know what to think here about this whole win situation. There. I think it tried to. Yeah. Okay. A couple more good questions there to, to look at while I rip this one on the green. A lot of good questions. Okay. Currently playing with my dad's old full set of Cleveland VA uh, Plus. Um, been playing for about seven months now and hitting mid 90s consistently. Would you recommend upgrading irons or driver first? Uh, yep, I would probably say irons. Um, I'd be curious to know what driver that that Mike yeah, is, that is like playing to, to know for sure if it's a, if it's like a full set all the way through <laughs> or, or no, or not. <laughs> Full and apart. <laughs> Even the team behind the we'll scenes. See, we'll see if we can get this done when starting off with a five shot lead with nine to play or not. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, I would, I would right. say I would for sure do an iron fitting and then kind of work work from there. And it doesn't have to be brand new either, um, but an upgrade from those would be a good start. All right. Looking at Callaway jaws, forged wedges, I have the standard jaws right now. Is it worth switching for that great feel and look? Um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm <laughs> getting distracted here. No, I, I understand. I, I'm just, I don't um, know what to do here. Try it again. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to come down to, for sure, you see the great feel. It's, the feel is going to be, I mean, you're playing the, what are you playing? The Jaws Force right now, right? Is that what your 58 is? I got the TaylorMade High Toe. You got TaylorMade, okay, High Toe, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, I would say Grooves for sure, check out those. If they're worn, I for sure just upgrade your, your wedges. And then from there, it's yeah. going to be a visual. I upgrade my, wedge, well, my 58 degree because I use it so much. I get a new one every year. Yeah. So. Um, just because of the grooves always wear out. I'd say standard Georgia, yeah, I'd upgrade. I mean, I replace my wedges every year um, for sure. I mean, I'd play yeah. a decent amount of golf in the summertime. But uh, I for sure upgrade my 56 and 60 every year because mm -hmm. those are the ones I use out of the sand and wear the most. Mm -hmm. One thing I notice I'm doing is I'm taking my glove off after every shot. I, even I know. I'm not putting. So, <laughs> uh, quick another question here, real quick. If, I have the, if you have the ceiling height in finances, Unicor is good. Yeah, I was looking at that. It was, it's a good setup option. Uh, 
Opportunity is knocking for Thomas Campbell. What do I got? 50, about 54 yards. Time to knock it, knock it in there nice and tight. Oh yeah. Man, it's not very tight though. It'll come off that slope though, watch this. Oh, huge. <laughs> All right, let's see what they give us here. I'm sure you're gonna have the box because I'm putting from 54 feet. Um, someone asking about T100 and T200 combo or does it have to be T100S from Edward there? I would say, and my, my thought is just gapping in terms of like the lofts are stronger with T100S. Yep. So it might just blend so you together a little smoother. got a two degree smoother. gap yeah. between them. So it might just blend together a little smoother like you won't have to adjust lofts as much. Um, that's my only thought. Um, but he's, you know, talking about extra wedge in the bag with the T100S. So, you know, and you can custom order to where you don't have the extra wedge or you can, um, you know, again, adjust the loss as needed with your custom set right. if you're going to match those up. But I do think T200 and either T100 or 100S would be a good combo set to have. Yeah, you've got, you've got options that you can go either way. You can mm -hmm. go, you can definitely go either way with those. Uh, but yeah, like you said, make sure those, there's, when you make that transition that the lofts are not too far right. apart. All right, 458 yard par four. That's roasted. Now where's that going? <laughs> <laughs> All right. No. Oh. I can play that. It seemed like they had a lot of hook on it. I got that on the toe. That might explain some of it, but. Yeah, oh, the wind was off the right as well. We'll have to come back and uh, watch this live and take a look at the swing and see what was going on today. <laughs> Analyze my little, swing a little, little bit. A little film review. Right. Um, Come with you over there, Thomas. <laughs> Diving hook out of the sky. <laughs> Open play. Any thoughts on 919 Forge versus T200 2021? T200, T200 looks like it might be smaller. Uh, it is smaller. Uh, it's not significantly smaller, but it definitely, T200 definitely is a little bit smaller. Even smaller than, say, like P790 as well in that same category. Mm -hmm. We did a video of that very recently comparing the two of them. Uh, performance is relatively similar, yes. We're talking about 30, 31, 31 degrees aloft on both seven irons. All right, we got 176 here. Play it out to the right, let the wind bring it back, right? That might be too far right, come on. That was actually a pretty good swing there. There we go. All nice. right, we got, we're dancing. Yep. All right, 173. Oh, someone asked for a long drive contest between us on the next par five. <laughs> well, I'll tell Here's you now. Here's the thing, if, if, well, if it's fairway only, I have a very not even gonna be close. big disadvantage here, so. Because I, the likelihood I keep it in the fairway is not great. Gotta be in the fairway. That yeah, at least makes so. it close for me. Well, we should be asking each other to like call the shots while we're playing. Or we have people ask someone oh, to hit, oh, a, yeah. hit, a, hit a fade or hit a draw. Mm. Could do that. It's a good ball there. Gosh, these greens are humongous. You they don't actually like large, realize yeah. how. Glenn's asking about upgrading irons. He's played X400 or X14 steelhead since 2000. Around a 10 handicap, strike the ball well, fairly straight. Without a fitting, what irons would you suggest I try? Well, 
Probably something newer than that. <laughs> oh, a three putt. putt. That's real. It's still only, See, now uh, we're, now we're, now we're finding its level a little bit now. <laughs> Just trying to level everything up yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. There we go. That's, that's funny. But it says he's around a 10 handicap. I mean, I think player's distance category for Glenn sounds pretty darn good. Someone in the 10 handicap range, been hitting the same irons for 20 years. Uh, so it'll be a it's going to be the, the only the in, thing is yeah. going to be I mean I don't know where his distance probably is probably a club because I'll, I'll guess a club at difference. least at yeah. least a club distance in yeah. terms of distance because right. stronger lofted plus this to technology in there he's going to hit his seven iron 15 yards farther so yeah. it's going to be about four degrees stronger and at least yeah. 15 yards further it might be yeah. more than that all right par five I guess this is it is six it yards jeez. Is this the one we've got to go after? I suppose. Got to be in the fairway. Low drive. Though. Oh, took a crack at that one. Don't go in the bunker. Perhaps a little quick. Sit, sit, sit. Oh, no. Oh. oh. All right, 320. Kept it in the fairway, one. 321. All right. It's a high bar. Did keep it in the fairway. Gave All you right. something to chase. Well. You should, me. you should. As long as you get it straight, you shouldn't take me down. No problem. Well, the straight part is, you know, that's the problem. <laughs> Wind off the right, okay. Oh, I hit that good. Yeah. It's got to come back. Go a little bit. Come on. Stay right. Come on. No. <laughs> Dang. What were we playing for? <laughs> what was the wager? <laughs> Dang. Shoot. Yeah, yeah, club speed 117 there. Pretty good. I did go after it. Yeah. Yours, you, uh, actually, I'm, still, I'm up. How does that work? Because I'm probably way left. It's a tiny little bit dog leg right, which has you over there. Is there any trouble on this next shot? This is I like driver off the deck. I think you deck. can rip it. I think you can rip it. John, yeah, our team at Wilmington is awesome. Um, they're they're fun to work with too, and Alex is definitely knows what he's doing and fitting. So uh, you'll be pretty set. I, I think you know. Yeah, he does really good work over there. Oh, went after that one. If that, Come you on. might get on the green with that if it gets the right roll. Needs to bounce. Ah, oh, oh, slope. That slope is in the way. Otherwise, it had a oh, real chance. Oh, come on. Stop bull. <laughs> God, that really had a chance to. Well, I have to probably like lay up or something because I'm in the rough. Someone's asking for our current drivers. So I'm play. playing the Callaway. Uh, Epic Max LS, nine degrees of loft on it. I've got the Tor AD uh, XC6X golf shaft in it. It's like 45 and a quarter inches in length. That's what I'm playing. I'm gonna hit this three wood here, out of the rough. Cause why not? Oh, I hit that hard. That yeah, well, a little low bullet. Nice shot. Come on. Stay there. You're going to stay on? I, want, I don't want to have to hit a shot. Ah, dang it. Yeah. <laughs> Those are two pretty good shots there. What, what driver are you playing, Drew? I got Sim 2. It's fitted for it earlier this year. That's actually on the channel, by the way. People can see how that went down. Um, this is me. Um, and then... I actually had some custom order issues myself with the shaft, so I'm actually playing a uh, the Aldilla NV green shaft, even though I was fit for the uh, the Ventus 7X. Yep. So I'm gonna plan this winter. I'm gonna try and figure out and get that in my bag. But it's a Sim 2, um, you know, 10 and a half degree, right? And then we uh, turned that loft down a little bit. All right, we got 28 yards. 
sit a little bit. And we turn the loft down a little bit on your driver just to try and open the face up, right? Because your yes. miss was that kind of quick left. My miss was that hook. Yeah. And a little bit, I mean, it's a little bit better now, but yeah. At the time, it's, and, and the fitting has certainly helped, so. Um, coming back to a question here, I've seen this question a couple of times, I want to make sure I get to it. Sim Max versus Sim 2 Max driver, uh, is there a difference between the two, not upgrading, but definitely looking at one or the other? We're talking one generation, and I've even said one generation, you're not going to notice like a right. major difference. You, you're talking five or ten generations, now obviously forgiveness yeah. level, a MOI increases a little bit, but let's face it, there is limitations how fast people can come off the club face. Right, so I mean, you're going to notice incremental differences based on just stability of the club head on miss hits, yeah. but you know, center face, ball speed, there probably won't be much of a difference there. It's just, you know, you'll have, you'll see the incremental uh, increases in stability of the club head when you miss. So. Yeah, so 350 versus 500, yeah, I mean, this right. the sim is still a pretty good option. Right. Yeah. I like how you, like, put all your clubs back in the bag and all mine are just laying, yeah. like, everywhere. <laughs> He's got, <laughs> does, is that, can the camera, yeah, <laughs> do people see that? Yeah, so all those clubs out there, all at Thomas's clubs, mine are just in the bag. The only club I haven't hit, is, this is interesting actually, the only clubs I haven't hit, and I think I hit the four iron earlier, is five and six iron. So I've hit every okay. other club in the bag. It's good to know for when you go to City Andrews, you know, which, which clubs you'll be pitting a lot. Right. I have a feeling if we go to San Andrews, be playing in a little, maybe a little, I mean, this is some wind, but a little windier and probably a little right. colder oh, yeah. and rainy oh, yeah. and, yeah. Won't be perfect conditions. Every time you see this course on TV, it's just people are bundled up, it's windy and raining. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> that, that was a well structure. All right, do I get a redo? It looks like it. All right. Oh, there we oh go. you moved me. You're good. All right. It's talking too much. There we go. Spin. Oh, oh. it stopped for you. Good one. Come on. All right. You know, one putt. You got a, just a seven, well, eight footer. For a birdie, I think that'd be the first birdie of the day. So I'm, kind of, I'm hoping it goes that in. That might be the first birdie between us all. Yeah. There we go. Birdie. My lead is. It's getting. It's it's going shrinking. downhill fast. Yep. <laughs> all right, coming for you. All right, someone asking, Raymond, TS4 any difference to TSI4? Um, so they're claiming more ball speed and less spin. They did introduce that new uh, club face to, or the club face material. Um, so I think you're going to see, you won't be necessarily off the center of the face, but I think on average you're going to see mm -hmm. a little higher ball speed on, again, the misses as well. Yeah. I hit it really well last week on the yeah. live. You had, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was the best performing driver, the yeah. TSI 4. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so I was impressed actually. That so TSI I, series looks really, really nice. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's, I keep saying tight, let's keep catching up with the, yeah, with the driver. Until the 917 series, they were just a little bit behind, and then after just that, had just the a, they just had some extra spin on it, yeah. really. But now it's the, the TS and TSI, they're really good. Well, good thing the fairway's wide. The wind is grabbing it, but that's a fairway hit, Thomas, officially, so. Money. <laughs> Clubs are just. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Play that wind a little bit. That was way off the toe, way off the toe. Garefact helping you out a little bit there. I almost missed. Oh, look at that bounce. That was, wow. <laughs> I actually almost missed the ball. Uh, question here, do you guys do outdoor fittings as well? We, we don't do outdoor fittings here yet. Uh, I know 
eventually I'd, I'd love to get us to a point where we'd be doing outdoor mm -hmm. things and that would be pretty good for it the, just for becomes the business, uh, but you know it, it's it's finding a location finding a location getting yeah. the technology out there and, and yeah. cr creating that environment that matches right. you know the indoor environment so all right looks like you're up all right, 173 maybe I should start putting some of my clubs away I'm trying to find the seven iron Riley is currently playing Apex 19 Pros. Are the X Forge CB21s a big upgrade in feel? Uh, I would say yes. Yeah, I would say. I would yes say too. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the big difference, um, X Forge CB forged feel with them. They're a lot softer. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, a lot softer. But and I mean, yep. this is assuming you know preferring a softer feel. But yeah, you're gonna yep. get muted sound and softer feel with X Forge CB. Was heavy. Go, go. Is that gonna get there? No. Just a little thick. Ah, bouncing up there. It's right on line. I get probably about five inches behind the bull on that shot. Well, what have I got here? 153 from the rough. Nine iron, 153, wind off the right. Kind of tugged it. It's got a sting. Uh, okay. A couple of really good iron shots there from Thomas and myself. <laughs> the wind got that one. Oofta. That was not good. Um, question here. Is there a real big difference between major manufacturers as performers, or does it really boil down to personal preference and how you hit the ball the day of your fitting? Uh, there is differences for sure. Um, a lot of yes, a lot of it is a little look and feel. Uh, some people do want to just kind of stick with one manufacturer, um, but there is nothing wrong with getting fit and playing four or five different manufacturers in your bag and um, playing the the club that performs best for you. Uh, but yeah, there's there's definitely mm -hmm. differences for sure. So I mean, oh, yeah. you talk about like say. And not ping, for example. You see a little more offset on some of their, their irons. Yeah, or you talked um, about Liangle with like Mizuno. Liangle, for example. Yep, you, it's like, that's a great example. Uh, Liangle with Mizuno versus, say, TaylorMade. You're talking about a one and a half degrees of loft and Liangle right. difference. Yeah, I mean, yep. and a lot of it, I mean, I think there is something to the look of clubs, too. Like, that's, I, I can't do the glossy drivers. It's just, I have a block in my mind for whatever reason, like the glossy black top or crown. So that's, I mean, there, I think, you kind of, as you test more brands, you kind of see and develop those for yourself. So. Yeah. Right. Should have been paying attention to what the bull did by the hole here. There was a slope behind the hole that I went too far and went kind of over and down it. Okay. That's, a That's my caddy, play caddy advice to you. Or is that your competitive advice to me? One of the two. <laughs> there it is, right there. There's just that like slope. God dang. Yeah, I mean, it just well, needed a little grab. bit more grab on it, but yeah. just kind of came in a little too hot with it. But yeah, I mean, look where mine is. So. Oh, you are way down there. Oh, yeah. There's the short game. Two putts, two, two putts. putts. That hurt. That should have been another one to pick up. What is the score like? One difference between the two of us? We got here. This whole looks like this OB right. It does, which is a little scary for is me. Is there actually an OB right though? <laughs> wow. There's been some wild, wild drives today. Hole 16, par four, uh, four eleven. Two shot difference. Yeah, it looks OB right. <laughs> Drew, I've seen a lot of, uh, coming down the stretch at uh, St. Andrews, I've seen a couple of collapses in a couple of major championships. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, so see if we can uh, find a way to get 
come back at you. That wind off the right's pushing it. Yeah, that was not going right. <laughs> well, you might. Oh! oh. <laughs> Threading the needle with that one. Threading the needle. Hmm. Do I hit driver? I would. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. I will. Uh, question here, do you guys like any direct-to-consumer irons, uh, Tacoma, Sub-70, et cetera? Some look really nice in the $600 range. We get a few trades in occasionally. Um, Sub-70 have looked really good mm -hmm. from what I've seen. Yeah, they have. But we don't, we don't fit them because we, we don't have an account, Bite. essentially. Holy smokes. That was uh, fair way. Fair way. <laughs> That's how you play it, Thomas. Look at that. Play it to the fairway? Yep. Go to the left. That was an anti-right swing. Yes, it was. <laughs> it very much was. All right, we got eight iron here. Oh, that could be really good. Is that far enough? Oh, it's not far enough. Mmm. Mm. I thought I hit that perfect. Just kind of laid off an eight iron a little bit. Dang. Chipping. Our up and down percentage hasn't been very good from off the green today. Well, no, it hasn't. <laughs> and I mean, that's honestly, I think that's it's the hardest thing. A with lot of our strokes, is, or yeah. if not all of them, well, except for those those bunker scenarios we've had, but yeah. There's just no feel for that on the track, man, but you get used right. to it after. And we intentionally left the putting off for that reason, too. Yes. Yeah. Switch club. Switching because I think I need to hit a little knockdown here as opposed to trying to hit a hard Yeah, 52. trying to feel that, that virtual wind. Yeah, I can feel it in here. Very nice. Clean, safe approach shot. There's yeah, just that a little bit really of unpredictability with that wind right now. It's not like we can't really tell, get the feel for how, right. how much it's impacting. All right, I gotta, you're at least putting. I've got to hit this one close here. Great shot. Oh. The question here, um, do you guys believe the branded Tor Wolves, Pro V1, TP5, et cetera, are worth the extra money over direct-to-consumer, Snell, Vice, et cetera? Well, I will say that though that test is on our list to do, um, compare those mm -hmm. balls and compare yeah. the differences. More importantly, play the same golf ball. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to, uh, once you find one that really works for you, whether it's direct-to-consumer. Just, just play, or, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter what it is. You right. know, just play the same one. And if you make the switch or try and switch to do a different ball, then switch to that ball for, you know, the good, basically. Yeah. I haven't personally played the Vice or, or Snell, but uh, I'm excited. Well, we'll, we'll get that test, list. and that's something yep. we've got on our list here. So, all right. Looks like you're off the tee here. You got the box. Road hole. God, people watching on the balcony there are going to be in trouble when I'm hitting. I might take it right over the... Take hotel. it right over for the drawer. Right over the hotel. I mean, the wind's off the right. <laughs> yeah, it's a good ball. Right in the middle. That was a fun shot. I kind of would, would love to do that. 
shot actually that, go actually uh, go into that shot. This is where things can you, get really you dicey. Got, you got to have balls to go up in all those buildings. Well, might be what I have to do given my right to left ball movement here today. Off the heel. Well, it's not going right. Is that in the fairway? Probably. <laughs> the other fairway. We're just staying alive. Uh, yes, we are, Breck. We are using the RCT Titleist Golf. We were, we're actually using the Titleist Pro B1X. Uh, we've been testing with the RCT for the, the last week. Very good results. Um, spin consistency. No italicized spin or anything like that. It's been very good. Uh-oh. Come back. Come back. All right. All right. We, we, were, we were flirting there. with trouble there. Yeah, it's literally right there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this is that <laughs> hole where it's out of bounds yeah. is like two feet from the green. All right, 178 yards, wind off the right for Thomas. Stop hooking. Ooh, wind of eating that one up. That was not going OB, I guess. <laughs> Raymond asking, do you guys use any game improvement apps like Arcos? And yes, uh, yep. we got a couple of videos got on the channel on actually here. about Arcos. Uh, we played nine holes using Arcos out at Les Bolstead. So, and I still have the sensors in my grips. I plan on re-upping with Arcos next year because it's really cool. And I'm, I'm also kind of a nerd for like the strokes gain stats that they offer, so. And even without having my phone in my pocket, I still manually enter it sometimes too. Yeah. So sometimes I don't want to even have my phone and I'll mm -hmm. just do it for the stats. Um, well, I did not expect to have 47 yards here. We'll see. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh. I probably should have taken a look at the green here. <laughs> Putting though. Yeah, that was the right distance. It's gonna be me here. Yeah. That's uh, I have a tricky shot here too though. Look at this little slope I gotta deal with. Yeah, I wish I took a look at that. <laughs> Played out to the right and let the green kind of feed it in there maybe. That's too far, isn't it? Sit. Play conservative there. Simple. Simple. Well, it's up to the putter. Well, about 30 feet. I gave you, me a three, three putt. Three putt. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, no. I got the same distance and gave me a three putt. Well, there goes my chance. <laughs> yeah, I, well, hey, there's, there is out of bounds over there that could happen here. <laughs> That's so far over there. I, just, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I think we're with the wind here, too, if I remember how the wind was throughout the round here. Yeah, it is with us. All right. Good swing. I hit that really good. Yep. It's pretty deep. Go! Nice. Got to hit play. one more shot. That'll play. <laughs> one eighteen club speed there, Drew. It's pretty impressive. We're warmed up now. Is 
it went out of the left too, or is out of the right? It's okay. it's behind us and behind out or right. out of yeah, it's with okay. us and from the right here. So. You hit that pretty good too. Look at oh, big kick forward. But we just hit each of our drives 345 yards. Pretty impressive. <laughs> this is where the long drive contest should have been. That'd right. be good. It's two ways to get there. Uh, my club speed was five mm -hmm. miles an hour slower than yours. But. All right. Well, uh, I think what we'll do is maybe just finish up this hole, and then we'll do a quick yeah. Quick hue and or you know, grab quick the finish last up few here. questions here, and we'll get out of here. Do the uh, award ceremony. Yeah, the award ceremony. Oh, that looks good. Ooh, tasty. That's a good shot. Eight feet, four inches. Probably easy two part par. <laughs> Yeah, you got the short end of the stick in terms of the, <laughs> the putt luck today. <laughs> First hole, I come out bearing at 27 foot for par. <laughs> All right, 29 yards. Good shot. Very nice. Go in. Seal the deal. All right. Nice birdie to finish with. Hopefully. I hope it gets I've missed, one, I've missed one, one foot, foot and a half before. Up. Right. Oh, up. gosh. <laughs> I'm having a rough time on the greens today. Well, got me beat there, Drew. There's the card. Yep. Ouch. Hmm. <laughs> All right, what else do we have for some questions that we were going to get to here? Uh, so it looks like Justin here, I struggle with a block fade. Can a shaft make a difference in that or purely swing? Um, yes, it can. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be player dependent on that, on that shaft. Um, block fade, is, it's probably going to be more club path and face angle control. Yeah. Um, but it can help you a little bit. also be club head, depending on. Club head you know, as well. Get yeah. draw bias in there, depending right. on. Right. If that's, if, that's <laughs> if that's with driver, yeah, right. a little yeah, more yeah. draw bias club mm -hmm. or upright setting or closing mm -hmm. face would be another option there too. Um, yeah, it looks like Alex actually asked that. Does that happen? All, all clubs are just the driver. Mainly it's the driver, but very rarely of irons. Yeah. Probably something to do with the, the yeah. face angle setup on the, on the driver. Um, um, did we get one? We got, did we answer? Uh, Mike asked us about the irons we were playing in our bag right now. I did see that earlier. Yeah. So I'm playing Callaway Apex TCB irons. Yeah. I also wanted to show, I got, so I got I210s and I500 combo. Those are ping, and I also have. I don't know if you can see this on the camera or not. You got the screw in ones? I've got the, the sensors in the top of my grips here, so and yep. I really like them. So. Uh, I saw another question there. Um, do you guys have a chart or guidelines for height, landing angle, stop and power for each loft iron that should be aiming for? So 45 degrees is always a, a good, good number to start with. With it's landing like angle. A, you know, for landing angle. Yeah. I always say, I always like to hit about 100, 110 feet in the air with my irons. Um, but it's going to come down to a couple of things, your, your club speed and how much spin you generate on the ball. Because if you spin the ball more, it's going to come in a little, little bit yeah. steeper. If you swing faster, generally you're going to probably hit the ball a little higher as well. Right. Yeah, so it, it depends. Um, some people, 40 degrees might be a good landing angle as mm -hmm. well. If, if you only hit the ball 140 yards with your seven iron, it's not going to be 110 feet in the air. It's probably right. maybe only 80 feet in the air. Yeah. So, and I know you guys have the kind of loose guidelines as to like, depending on a player's club speed, you're like, okay, you should be hitting your eight iron at this ball speed, or you should be hitting your eight iron at this distance. Yep. Things like that. But obviously, it is player dependent. You know, certain swings can result in certain tendencies. So. Right. That's just, uh, you know, that's kind of the the answer there. And um, then to follow up on that too, um, that's where you assess whether you should be playing a hybrid or a long grind. Right. Because if it gets way too low, um, correct. That landing angle and that height, consider yep. a high lofted fairy wood or a hybrid mm -hmm. to replace those long irons. 
Uh, how often do you recommend upgrading clubs? Currently use Tailor-Made Rack, OS, Irons, and an R5 driver. That is 15 years of technology. So certainly going to see forgiveness improvements, 100%. Um, the clubs now are just more stable. Uh, there's more, you know, they, they throw in tungsten weighting, the perimeter weighting. They're able to do that better now today. So I think you 100% see that performance difference. Um, that's the, uh, from that, if you're looking at, like, if you have clubs 15 years old, I think that's for sure where you'd upgrade. Right. Um, you know, I, I kind of, I kind of generally, I'd, I kind of would say five to six years with drivers where you're going to see, you know, the differences in kind of uh, MOI, forgiveness, launch, things like that. Again, we've talked about how ball speed isn't going to be super improved, um, at least in the last five years, but, you know, the, the forgiveness, stability, things yeah. like that. MOI consistency is just, be, yeah through the roof on some of those bigger heads these days. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I uh, think that's probably a good good point there to stop. I'm not seeing any other questions come in. Uh, finish off with this last question here. Should I get fit for irons again if my swing speed went from 70 to 80, 73 to 85? Yeah. I think so, yeah. probably. I, I would, yeah. Probably, or at yeah. least, you know, there. If your swing I mean, speed is changing that much, there's probably yeah. other elements of your swing that have changed. You know, you might need to relook at lie angle and, and maybe loft or length to make sure things are gapped correctly. So I think at the very least, you go in and get those things tweaked. But That's a depending big on the shaft, you know, if yeah. you're playing, I mean, I would imagine 73 miles now, you're fit for a regular flex shaft. Yeah. You might be in that range now to, you know, you'd benefit from a stiff flex, things like that. So. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's a, that's a big change up. And yeah. Yeah, that for sure, I would assess that, uh, depending, on what, depending on what shaft you were originally playing with. Too, right, but, for sure. Um, yes, I would. All right, well, I think this is a good point for us mm -hmm. to, uh, to finish up today. Yeah, try like, something a little different today. Yep, I think this is, well, we had some viewers watching and chiming in and asking questions and commenting and everything like that. Um, Drew took, took me down today. Today, yeah, yeah, the course kind of favored you a little bit with the, with the putter. misses a little bit, and <laughs> I got very lucky on misses, and then my yep. putter was my putter was rolling that I didn't <laughs> actually use. But um, if we didn't get to your uh, chat, leave it in the comments below the video. We'll get to that as soon as we can. Uh, otherwise, we look forward to having uh, a live broadcast every Thursday, 10 a.m. Central is the goal, and we'll have different topics. You also can drop a comment and maybe what you want to see from us during these live broadcasts and we'll get that scheduled down. So I think, otherwise I think we're going to go here. Uh, again, viewers, thank you for joining us. Thomas, thanks for playing some virtual golf today and, and providing all your insight for the viewers today. Yep, good plan there today, Drew.